Hello and welcome back to my series where I try to develop a Pong clone in the Bevy game engine. Last time we implemented paddles, we implemented movement and we implemented keyboard input. One thing I immediately noticed today is that the CPU usage is quite high. I'm not sure how to actually prevent this, but I guess um, we need to do some frame rate limiting. But before we tackle that, um, let's take a look at uh, the source code repository. Um, I uploaded uh, the code I'm working on in this series to GitHub. You can find it on my GitHub page and in the video description to the YouTube videos. Also, let's just commit what we've done last time. I always forget that. We added a pedal movement system with a pedal speed and keyboard input. Usually I would do this in, in, in two commits, I guess, but yeah. Add pedal movement. So now let's take a look at the bevy repository and look for possibilities to pin the frame rate in some way. Fixed time step. No, that's not quite what I had in mind. So, essentially, let's let's take a look if we find something about CPU usage. So they seem to have a similar kind of hardware. Yeah, I'm not sure if I can dig into this problem right now. Let's first take a look at the um, CPU usage in release mode. Maybe that's better. Takes a while to compile. So my idea on, on how we can continue from here is either maybe implement the collision between the ball and the paddles or we could take a look at positioning on screen. Because right now we are working with um, absolute positioning Oh, actually, the CPU usage is a little bit better, but not perfect, I'd say. So essentially, if I resize the window, you can see that it's all absolutely positioned. So we might have to take a closer look at that. I mean, one, th one thing we could start doing is... Um, Instead of using all the default plugins, just use the ones we actually need. One way we can do this is by just copying out um, these. And pasting them into our code.
and then remove everything we do not need. Type registry plugin. Yeah, or maybe it's not such a good idea because we need to import all the different crates for this work. We have the window plugin, input plugin, diagnostics, transform, transform plugin, UI plugin. Yeah, let's just go back. But it's kind of interesting. I, I want to take a closer look at those plugins. So when we go to the plugin trade page, we can see a list of different plugins. We've already seen the asset plugin in the examples. We don't need audio right now. We have a core plugin. We have a diagnostics plugin. We've seen that in the examples as well. Frame time diagnostics plugin. That sounds interesting. This is probably just a texture format input. Also something, or maybe not texture format, but some kind of file format. PBR, print diagnostics plugin, render plugin, schedule runner plugin, sprite plugin. Why do we need a sprite plugin? Type registry, UI, window versus W in it. I'm not quite sure. How they differentiated. So let's first take a look at the core core functionality. Let's just take a look at the source code. All the core plugin does it initializes the entity labels resource, whatever that is. It's it it might be the way you can dynamically fetch entities via strings or something like that but timer we've used that al already different vector types what what is register property we already know register component do we let's take a closer look at the app builder So one thing we've seen is, oh, those those are probably private methods. Register component. In its system, in its system to stage. Register, maybe it's not. So what does init resource return? It still returns an app builder. But then register component is called on this app builder. This still exists. It also returns an app builder. Oh, and there it is, register properties. Yeah, not quite sure what they're doing. Nothing I want to dig into right now. So let's take at the frame time. It's frame time di diagnostics to an app, specifically frame time and frames per second. This this now sounds quite interesting. I mean, you could just try adding it and maybe it'll, it'll just work. Add plugin 
frame. Time Diagnostics plugin. Default probably. Oh no, we just create a struct, a zero size struct like this. This is actually creating a type, it's a literal, because the struct is empty. Although it still has a default <laughs> derive. So let's take a look. Maybe we'll get an FPS counter. And doesn't look like it. So it's not automatic. Let's take a look at setup system. We have a new diagnostic f called frame time and a new diagnostic called FPS. So maybe we just need to enable the print diagnostics plugin. Print diagnostic plugin, uh, diagnostics plugin. Add plugin. Print diagnostics plugin. And that's not enough. Oh yeah, because it has some properties. Let's just take the defaults for now. And now it prints the frames per second, but they are still at just at 60, which is strange. Why is it using so much CPU time then. Let's let's do the release build again. And take a look. Um where is it? Is it Redness Cargo? No it's not. Maybe it's Pong. Well, that's, that's kind of much better. It's just 6% CPU. Whereas in debug build, it is more like... Thirty-five percent. That that doesn't make any sense. This is more than one CPU that they're using. I mean, they're they're hitting almost all cores with that workload. Let's take a look at it using HTOP. F3 for search. Yeah, whatever. In any case, we have a, a frame counter now. Let's just add that first and commit it. So at frame diagnostics and print them push so let's just look at the other plugins first we have a render plugin it's core render types and systems to an app Schedule Runner plugin. So we have a schedule and a run mode. Schedule is an ordered collection of stages which each contain an ordered list of systems. 
Schedules are essentially the execution plan for an app system. They are run on a given world and resources references. A uh, reference. A list of. I think we first need to go back to what a stage actually is. Executor stage. No, not quite. Once or loop. I guess that might be triggered once every frame by default or something like that. Run mode loop wait none is the default. W init plugin, window plugin. Not sure, probably more windows. UI plugin. Type registry. Sprite. So what does it do? It's color material and texture atlas. In any case, we can, we we could just continue implementing um, collision. So let's go to the examples first. Two D rendering. Audio example, entity component system examples, scene, shader, UI, window. So we can take a look at um, the window examples for now because they might tell us something about how we can access the size of the window. Sorry for getting sidetracked again. That's just, uh, you should have noticed by now, that's just the, the way how I approach things. In this case, I got side, I got sidetracked by getting back to uh, the positioning of ball and uh, paddle on the window. And I know where to find the code for collision in the breakout example. So I'm just gonna take a look at this one first. No, it's on a desktop. Bevy. Cargo run. Minus minus example. Clear color. Okay, so they just changed the background color, I guess. Add resource, clear color. Oh, so the plugin that starts the window accesses this resource for the color. I mean, we could just use this to, to set the color to black. I'm quite curious if this order matters. I think we can add the resource after adding the default plugins. In this case, in the setup system, um, commands that add. No, we can actually not do this. Can we? Insert resource. Let's take a look at the commands. Because I think we can just 
write a command that works with resources. With insert resource, we have write resources with a resources writer. And that's essentially it when it comes to resources, I guess. So actually, insert resource just uses a uh, uses write resources internally, which uses insert resource, which probably implements the write resources trait, resources writer trait like this. In this case, you get a box of self and mutable resources. In this case. Implementation looks like this. The resources writer just writes what? Oh no, I'm, I need to look at the implementation of the insert resource. It just implements the resources writer by inserting the resource it contains. But we, we can just use insert resource. Insert resource, clear color. Not default, it should be black. Where's the clear color coming from? Render pass clear color. Clear color of color. Okay, let's just use black. And let's take a look. And it works. Make background black. So next example is multiple windows. And um, as you might have noticed, I didn't put a um, x11 or Wayland parameter here because it just uses the correct thing by default. So we have one window and another window. If we close this one, both close. They are adding a startup system, which has commands, which has create window events, active cameras, render graph, materials, it's quite a lot. Create a new window by create sending an event. That's not too interesting. Window settings seem more interesting. So we add a resource. That doesn't look great. This just seem to have crashed my graphics card. I'm gonna pause the recording for now. So it works again, it changed, it, it, it somehow changed the resolution of my monitor back to 4k and it wasn't really happy about it.
maybe because of the full screen window mode. I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna try it again and the same thing happened. So let me just reset it real quick. So actually what you've seen is the, the window, but it just does something really strange with, which makes my graphics driver or my, uh, my desktop behave in a quite unwanted way. But we can still take a look at the example in, the, in terms of code. We add a resource. What's the difference between add and insert? Maybe it doesn't have a window descriptor by default, I'm not sure. What was our other example? Clear color. In the gl clear color example, they also use add resource, so it's the same actually. I am a window with height virtual uh, um, vertical sync resizability. I mean, we could just do that, make our window not resizable, and everything should be fine in a way. But we could also, given that we have a resource here, maybe we can just take a look at the um, at accessing the the window descriptor and and getting information out of it. I mean, let's let's try that. Maybe we can actually get the width and the height out of the window descriptor. And I think using queries, we can actually query for changes. So, uh, new, removed, and set. Get the reference. Sets the entity's component to the given value. Yeah, not quite. Changed. So, changed is actually... It's possible to use it for queries, I guess. Let's take a look at the bevy book for uh, for example. Or again, I mean. I, I, I'm quite sure I've seen um, more query kinds of queries before, maybe in the um, book here. So yeah, you can write query changed and I'm not sure what position is in this example. Yeah, it needs to be a component because uh, queries work on components. Or like entities of components. And I'm, I'm not quite 100% certain about how to use the terminology right now. But we could just add a new system. Fn print. What was the name? Window descriptor, I guess. Print window descriptor. And all we do is we... This is a resource. So how do we actually access it? Maybe it works like this, I'm not sure. We have the window descriptor as a resource of window descriptor not sure if that's enough for a system but I would expect it to be executed once per frame Print window descriptor. Dot system. And it actually looks like it's a system. At least it seems to compile. So we'll take the window descriptor and we'll just print it. Probably we'll need to print it in debug mode. Hmm. 
not quite. Whatever, we, we can just print the different properties by themselves in isolation. So, width equals this. Then the height. What different properties do we have? With the title, we have vsync, we have mode, we have resizability. Let's just use width and height for now. It immediately crashes. Resource does not exist. Bevy window, window descriptor. So not quite. Event reader, events. So, and let's take a look at who actually implements event. Well, um, oh, it's a struct, it's not a trait. Maybe we need to add an, a window descriptor first. Let's go to the setup commands dot insert resource window descriptor with maybe one One what's what's seven twenty P again? One two eighty times seven twenty Um one two eighty divided by seven twenty Yeah, it's 16 to 9, so it's it's correct. Title is Pong Clone. VSync is true. Because we don't want this to just run away. Resizable. Set to true for now. Window mode is still windowed. Where's the window mode coming from? from bevy window so I guess at this point we need to either load bevy window uh, in or put it in our cargo.toml or maybe it has a great default value and we can just use the default and don't have to deal with it and the default is windowed, which is great. So let's add it at a default. Like this, we should now have a 720p window. Yeah, it looks just about right. 
Let's now change. We change the dimensions, but the window descriptor that is printed out didn't actually work. Or it, it didn't actually update the value. So not sure how I would find out how to or uh, not not sure how I would I actually find out that a window window was resized. Oh, we have events right here. Close window, create window, cursor moved, exit on window, close state, window, window, close requested. So this is the actually actual window. Window created, window descriptor, window resized. This is actually the event that I'm looking for. Which means we are now probably going to take a look at the event system. A window has an ID and so all stuff like that. Not too interesting. A window event that is sent whenever a window has been resized. It has the fields ID, width and height. I'm not quite sure if the main window has some special properties. Let's take a look at the multiple windows examples again. Example again. So create window with a new window ID. Rendering, rendering, rendering. Second window. Is there a first window? No. Render graphs. Scene setup. I don't see any systems that actually work with the existing window. It would be really interesting to get the actual window descriptor of the initial window. Because if we were to just, but for, for now, I mean, I, I know that we only have one window. So we can probably just listen for that event and that's it. Should be fine. Let's take a look at the event example. At event my event. Event trigger state, event listener state. Place a new event, a system that triggers the event once per second, and a system that prints a message whenever the event is received. So this is the listener and the trigger. We have a event that contains a message. The trigger state is containing a timer, which makes sense. I mean, just wrapping a timer and for a specific purpose so we create a new resource essentially event listener state the event trigger state it's just every once every second the event trigger system takes the time resource and a mutable trigger state resource and every time, oh, I guess the time resource is taken because it triggers the system every time once, every time something changes, but I'm not quite sure about that. So we just send the event into some kind of event queue for this type. But for, for our case, um, the event already exists. We just want to listen to it. In this case, we have an event reader of my event. Not sure if we have to actually 
encapsulate this like that. But yeah, essentially, if we have more than one event listener, we, we do need to differentiate between the different kinds of listeners, I guess. That's probably why they are creating the state. Although, yeah, because then you can create use the same event and create different systems that respond to it. Because systems respond to a particular type. But for now, it's it's just th this that we are interested in, in. Assuming that nobody else has registered, registered a listener for the same event. So let's just try it out. So we need a resize listener. It gets a let's let's just remove that system for now. The resize listener has a has a mutable event reader resource. Resize reader or resize listener rather, which is a mutable resource of event reader of window window resized. And in this case, we want this reader to iterate over this events resource. I, I don't quite grasp it yet. Resource of events of resize window resized for resize event for event in resize this dot Iter iterates over events, resize events. So this is called not a resize listener, but a window resize listener. Listener, and we can then print. Says events needs to be borrowed, and we can now print the event. The event is a double ended iterator. That doesn't make any sense. For event in maybe we just go over the events. What is events actually doing? We have event reader. Let's clone that tab. 
And we have events. An event collection that represents the events that occurred within the last two events update calls. Events can be cheaply read using an event reader. This collection is meant to be paired with a system that calls events update exactly once per update of frame. Events update system is a system that does this. Event readers are expected to read events from this collection at least once per update slash frame. If events are not handled within one frame or update, they will be dropped. So essentially we use an event we, we still need an event reader. But this is a double ended iterator. Like what, what comes out of it is a double ended iterator with an item type of what is t t is actually a window resized so oh yeah right some typo but essentially this should work except that window resize doesn't implement debug no i i think the ide is just doing something wrong here so essentially we want to add the system and we should see our events printed out window resize listener that system not quite resource does not exist event reader bevy window event window resized so maybe we do actually need to create our own event reader like this or event listener Let's just call it a listener, not a listener state, actually. Struct window resize listener. And it has a, it has an event reader, which is an event reader of window resized. Is it? Yeah, it is. And uh, we're gonna derive default just as they are doing because it's, it makes stuff much easier to work with. And we still need to add, um, add the resource. Oh, it's called add event. Where do they add the event listener state? Init resource event listener state. How does this actually work? Init resource. I think we already looked at this at some point. Where's the resource coming from? Yeah, it, it from resources is actually called on on the thing, but how is from resources implemented on our custom listener state? Impel t from resources for t, where t equals default. So as long as we have a default implementation, we can use init resources or init resource to actually construct the resource. 
but I still want to do it in the setup code. So let's do it here. Yeah, maybe let's just do it with an event reader of window resized for now without actually without actually using our special purpose event listener. Oh, nice. It actually works. We now get the resize events. Although, although I'm not quite sure how to react to, to these events yet. And maybe we still want to do it like this because it makes it easier to see what's going on. Or does it? I mean... Let's do it like they are telling me to do. So we have a window resize listener and in the resize listener dot event reader we can now iterate the events. And the system is, is it a listener? I guess it is. That's also what they call it. So let's not rename that for now. This is the state for this listener because the event reader knows which events have been read yet or read by now. So let's just rename it the way they intended. Window resize listener state. And if we do that, we actually need to insert a window resize listener state default and now we should get the same result also as you as you might as you might have noticed at the beginning we get one event and the actual window id is all zeros for the default window as it seems But we get quite a lot of events. Probably, if um, if we actually do this, we we need to do some kind of debouncing or something like that. But what what we could do is instead of iter, we could use the last uh, or latest event. Choose the latest events that this reader hasn't seen yet. This updates the event reader's event counter, which means subsequent event reads will not include events that happened before now. I think this also means that you can have multiple event readers, so it's it's a good idea to pu put it in a struct and not just use the event reader directly, because then you would have one global event reader, and if some other part of the program, for example in a plugin, were to actually use the same event reader it could steal your events from you so it it does make a lot of sense to to make this wrapper type here don't fold my code so latest and since what let's do it like this dot iter 
Uh, maybe not. So latest returns an option and we're just gonna map the option and that's it. What did I do? Expected. Oh, great. It's probably use an if let in this case. So what just happened, I, I did some stupid stuff. I mapped an option to empty uh, tuple, which, or to the unit type, which doesn't make too much sense. So what it wants me to do is if uh, use if let some event equals resize listener dot event reader dot latest of a latest event of resize events then print the event so if we have an event we print it which is not that great in terms of ifs but hey it's it's not one of the bad ifs i guess although it might be let's just rerun it and and take a look at the event frequency if it changes Not quite, not quite sure actually. But that's also maybe because we have like 60 frames per second. And with 60 frames per second, um, we cannot even resize it fast enough to, to actually trigger the, the D bouncing or in of events or let's just taking the latest event so yeah what have we done so far we have added a background color we have put in a default window size and set up a listener for window size changes which you could make prettier Window resized to width times height, width by height, whatever. Event dot width and event dot height. This should be much more readable. And let's rename this to resize event. Nice. Much more readable. So let's commit that. First, let's commit this part. Which was about setting window defaults configure window settings or just set window settings and then listen for window resizes So I guess this is a good point to stop this video and in the next one 
I'm tempted to promise that I'm going to actually tackle collision. But you never know what happens. I might get sidetracked again and do something completely different, but we'll see. So see you in the next one. Bye.